Yo, does anyone have some oil running around? Yeah, it's a bit stiff. What? What, that? What, you're trying to tell me you actually follow the directions? <laughs> Nerd. Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product announcement video for the ECA 1.6 scale M240 swivel mount. This unit here is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and can be found via the link listed below. The actual built example that we have here was built for commission and belongs to a private collector. In this video, we're going to go over the kit itself as well as the built example over here showcasing all of the unit's functions as well as its features. So stay tuned because there's going to be a bunch of info coming right at you. The ECA cradle is designed to work with the M240 Bravo model from ZY Toys and you can see an example of the ZY Toys M240B and the supplied ammo can fitted to the unit at this time. The ZY Toys is probably one of the best renditions of an M240 Bravo on the market in 1.6 scale and in case anyone is interested I actually went ahead and made a video review on this exact ZY Toys M240 Bravo model and that can be found on the ECA channel, as well as you can find a link to that review listed below in the video description. As I routinely mention in these videos, I frequently take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 1 6th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. For this particular example here, this is really relevant because not only was this unit built and painted for commission, but the entire unit itself came into existence because the customer went ahead and reached out because this was not something that was on the catalog previously, nor was it something that I even had any plans on producing. So if you're watching this and you, there is a MG mount that you are interested in that doesn't exist from any other maker, by reaching out with an email, perhaps you might be able to have me create something along these lines for you. To start this video off, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model.
And here are the parts for the mount, fresh from the printer, just before I go ahead and start the actual construction. The components are basically where they need to be. There may be one or two small little tweaks I need to make to adhere or there. The mounting bracket, you notice, is a different material. That's because this piece here was printed with a different vendor. However, the production units are actually going to have this built into this set that we have here. So for the time being, we'll just put a pin in that. So the set is going to consist of basically two main pieces. We have the main cradle itself, which also double acts as the ammo can holder, or ammo cans holder, plural. And we have the swivel arm itself. So starting with the arm segment, here you get to see all the components, as well as all the detailing that's integrally printed on. All of the fastener and knob detailing that are found on the real unit have made their way to the 3D printed counterpart. Probably the coolest aspect is this arm that we have over here, where it has some instructions that on the real unit would be milled into the billet section. Hopefully it comes out on camera, specifically in the raw print state, but it says, do not lube, right there on the top portion. Even though this is not printed in the HD material, the wording is very clear and legible, and once painted, should be one of the key features that pops out, specifically after it gets its weathering. The next component is the cradle, and this is probably the most complex and elaborate cradle that I've yet to produce. What's very interesting about this set is not just the portion that holds the M240 or the M249 in place, but it's the ammo can holders. And the fact that I was able to do everything as a single printing really cuts down on the set's complexity as well as the construction time. Starting with the main section is the body right here. This is the main cradle that secures either the M249 or the M240 in place. The unit from what I was able to tell from the real example is made from all billet aluminum that was milled to the shape that we have here. So you see a lot of those type of characteristics present on the 3D printing. This would include cutouts, sunken wells for fasteners, as well as other sections of geometry which really has CNC written all over it. Probably the most interesting portion of this cradle though is with the ammo can holder. On this section here we have the provisions for securing on a 7.62 NATO ammo can, while directly behind it we have the provisions for mounting on a 5.56 caliber ammo can. Starting with the 308 section, on the real unit, it would all be made from stamped plate steel that would be folded and then welded to shape. And all of these attributes are present on the 3D printing here. The geometry is as per the real unit. Note all of the perforations that are found for weight savings. We have these two tabs, which look to be some kind of a mounting tab, but for the love of me, I have no idea why they're there. But they're on the real one. Ergo, they're going to be on this one. And you can see the weld beads present and again this is true to form. What's really cool is with the geometry of this little round section here this has to do with the way the ammo can it fits and secures in place which I'll touch upon in a second but you can see it has this nice smooth surface here and this is to aid feeding of the ammo belt so it doesn't snag up on anything. The ammo can is secured to the cradle mount via this bracket which again would be CNC billet aluminum on the real unit and here you get to see all of those CNC type cut marks present on the piece. All the fastener details are present. There are three small fasteners that secure this bracket to the mount and then there are two larger fasteners that are countersunk into the cradle mount and that's how this unit is positioned in place. One thing that's also pretty cool is that I believe you have the ability to mount this on the reverse side for one reason or another and you can see that's a mirror image on the reverse section. For the 5.56 can holder, this is again two pieces put together right here. We have this large bracket which clearly is a handle so you get to put your hand on a second point of contact when using the, the MG. It has all of the correct geometry to the real piece and what's really cool is that the real section is this plate steel that is thickened up in these sections over here for extra strength. And the way they thickened it up is that they just simply bent and folded it over in order to 
give it a little bit more structure. And these features are present on the ECA printing. The bottom portion here has the correct geometry and secures to the cradle via these four mounting fasteners. But in addition to that, the fasteners are sandwiching not only this piece, but the 5.56 caliber ammo can holder in place. And you'll see that the 5.56 can mount is too bolted in place. Again, all these fittings here are as per the real unit that I was studying. Circling back to the ammo can holder, specifically the version for the 762, here I have the ammo can found and supplied with the ZY toy set. And again, it's dragon tooling, as I mentioned in the ZY toys review. If I open it up, the ammo would be in this type of format with the rounds pointing this way. And to secure it in place on older ammo can holders, you had some kind of a tray holder or something along those lines to keep it from wobbling around. But in the 1960s on the M60 mounts, they came up with this really slick system that carried over to this unit here where we recycle or this little ramp here actually serves two functions. Like I touched upon before, it adds as, or it acts as a nice smooth area for the rounds to slide up into the MG. But with the way it's shaped, it secures the cannon place by simply just rock and locking it like the way you see here. With the way the piece overhangs in when the can fits in place, it holds it and prevents it from falling loose. No matter how much the unit is shook around, this thing isn't going anywhere. And note how easy the can fits in place. No other work is required. This includes any sort of hand fitting or any other type of alterations that need to be made to the mount or the can in order to get the piece to fit in. It's ready to go out of the box. Just hook in and rest it inside. If you want, the only mod you might want to make is to remove the lid. As I mentioned in the other video, the lids on these ammo cans are removable without any tools. You simply open up and you wiggle it a little bit to the one side and the entire hinge just pops off removing the lid. But of course, this is something that's left up to the builder because you can also position it in this type of format where the geometry of the lid here acts as a belt cover and it prevents crud and other sort of particulate from getting to the exposed ammo. While at the same time, leaving for a nice little cutout over here for the rounds to feed into place. The last thing to touch upon is the mount that we have here. And this is what actually secures the entire setup to whatever vehicle that you're mounting it on. Be it a Humvee, a Deuce and a Half, or one of those cool Special Forces Doom buggies. The unit has all of its appropriate details. Note the weld beads are integrally printed on. And the unit is held in place via these four holes, which are used to secure mounting fasteners that are going to be supplied with the ECA set. Also, what's not shown on the table is a length of wire for the cables that are used to secure the pins in place and the pins themselves, which are going to be using some lengths of styrene rod. The rods are included as they are with the other ECA cradle sets, but are just not present during filming. And here's the unit now fully completed with the MG fitted in place. The MG just drops into the appropriate location. With the way the ZY Toys and the Dragon unit are designed, the bipod, or I should say the tripod mounts that are found on the front trunnion and the rear portion over here are molded solid. So the builder is going to have to drill these two sections out in order to get it to fit into the ECA mount. This is something that's easily done with a couple small drill bits. Once the units are drilled out, the pins just get inserted in place and the unit is held into the cradle as it would on the real unit. The use of adhesives isn't required in order to keep the unit in place. However, it is highly recommended. On the example over here, two drops of adhesives were used on both the front and rear trunnions just to keep the unit mounted in place. This is to prevent the unit from working itself loose, which could eventually over time cause damage, specifically if you have parts that are falling off all the time. Since this unit is mounted in place and is probably never going to be removed, the addition of the adhesives is definitely one that will help everything in the long run. The pins themselves, if you look closely, are painted in silver, which is something that I've seen on the real example of this exact same mount that I was researching. And you can also see a bunch of different features like that scattered across this unit. Unlike the older World War II mounts where basically everything is olive drab, on the swivel mount here, you're going to see components that are not just with the 
USGI tan color, but you'll see components painted in black, as well as also others in silver. We have another pin found in this location over here, and it too has a little retention ring on it. And this unit, I believe, is some kind of a travel lock or something, because obviously it looks like it's something that gets pulled out for this piece to swivel upward. As for what it does, Unfortunately, that information I just don't have, but I'm pretty sure if someone out there has experience with one of these, feel free to put that info in the comment section listed below. On the topic of the black accents, you can see that the black was used on a lot of small little fasteners that are integrally printed on. We have two right here on the back, this bar that I mentioned before, but also we have this cable hookup. And if you look on the inside here of the mount, it's a little tricky to see, but all of the fasteners are painted in black. As again, this is how it was represented on the examples that I was studying. Back to the cable that I was touching upon before, you can see the cable right over here, which is used to keep the securing pin in place. This detailing is made out of a very thin and flexible piece of electrical wire, and a length of electrical wire is going to be supplied with the ECA sets. The builder needs to bend it to the shape that you see here, and the material bends very easily. What's also nice about the wire is that since it is just covered in black silicone, the need to paint it is unnecessary, and it looks very realistic once fitted in place, as you can see here. On a similar note, same is true for the retention pins, which are found on the various locations here on the model. These are fabricated out of bits of metal wire brads, and you'll notice that they are left in the white, as again, this was replicating the look that I saw on the real unit. With the two little knobs that we have here on the sides, the knobs themselves are painted with the same beige tan color that's used on the remainder of the model, but the fasteners themselves are painted in black. Something else that's interesting involves the can holder. On this portion here, the can holder, where the can actually locks into place and it also becomes a smooth surface for the rounds to enter into the MG, you'll notice that this section over here is left in a polished metal state, or on this model here, it's an illusion to being a polished metal state. This again is a feature lifted directly from the real unit. If you look carefully, you'll note that when I paint this, I don't go from one end all the way to the other end, and I stop short at the thickness here of the section on the sides. This is something that I saw on the actual example. I wanted to mimic that on this model. The shiny portion cuts abruptly right over here, right slightly above the section where the tray unit bolts onto the cradle. Again, giving the piece just that much more authenticity. From the main can holder takes us to the M249 can holder, and this here is just painted in black as, again, what was referenced on the real units that I was researching. When I was painting this one, this was something that took a little bit of care because with the way the piece is fitted in place, the tolerances are pretty tight, so when you're painting, you want to be really careful not to accidentally overpaint the area, which could leave paint stains on the handle area as well as also on the mount itself. So some precision painting is going to be required in order to get that fully completed. But once the unit is fully completed, though, you really get to see how much color pop it gives to the model as a whole. Also, now that the unit is fully painted and weathered, you really get to appreciate that warning label that I touched upon before. It is completely legible, and is probably one of the cooler, more unique aspects of the entire cradle, in addition to the other features that I touched upon before. And you may have also seen me maneuvering the thing around, and you can see that when I'm doing so, the piece is fully articulated. It rotates and swivels very, very fluidly and very easily. The main yoke itself can pivot side to side and also up and down. One thing that's really cool and it's probably something that you may have noticed is that the tolerances are ideal where the unit is flexible enough where you can pivot around. However, the tolerances are stiff enough where the piece stays put. So it's not like something where it will be constantly flopping around when you move the unit. You can simply adjust the MG to where you want it, and it will stay there until you decide to move it again. Same is true for not just the main yoke, but also for the remainder of the swivel sections as well. 
For the bottom base here, like I touched upon before, this is to be secured to the vehicle with the use of fasteners. The fasteners are going to be supplied with this unit, so the individual can go ahead and mount this to the vehicle that he's working on. However, they are just brass fasteners and are not painted. One thing I do want to recommend for anyone who is installing one of these units to the vehicle is you could paint them either the tan color here, or me personally, I would paint them flat black like you see on the other accent details that I touched upon before. For the unit's paint work, I went ahead and cobbled together my own mix of modern era US military desert sand. The color was something that I mixed while looking at several real photographs of actual military vehicles and this is the type of color that you've seen on military vehicles from the US military within the last 20 something years. The color itself was airbrushed on. Of course the color is an exterior latex. The model itself was primed with flat black prior to the addition of the base coat. From there, the weathering was achieved via washes, and the chipping that you see on all the surfaces is done with my usual method with the use of dry brushing. I'm actually glad that I went ahead and built this example here because it's been a long time since I've done one of these modern era US desert tan type vehicles, and I do have a few other models in the lineup right now where they're going to be painted with the exact same procedure, with the exact same colors, so it's a good thing to get some practice in before I go ahead and jump on one of those. But needless to say, I'm really happy in how the color turned out on this, and it looks like a spitting image to the real examples that I was researching. So that's basically it. From here, I'm going to go ahead and put the ammo can back in. Like I stated before, the ammo can just locks into place as it does on the real unit. So I'm going to open up the lid, line up the wall of the ammo can to the inside. Once it finds that sweet spot, it just locks right into place. The piece is not going to come out. And then from there, I could go ahead and load it. So I'm just going to pop open the feed tray cover. Get my ammo belt, make sure that the links are pointing upward so the brass is to the grass. Do, do, do. It's a little bit easier on the real unit, specifically when you're not trying to film something. Okay, pop that in. All right. <laughs> force of habit. So from here now I just close the top cover and the unit is ready for display. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in the review where I talk about the quirks and the shortcomings with the stock ZY Toys and Dragon ammo can is that one thing that is missing is the latch that locks the lid to the base of the can. Why this is really important and relevant is because with the way the latch is designed, it's actually used to protect the rounds in this area over here. With the way the latch opens up, it kind of floats over there, and with the way this is supposed to be set up is that you would secure the can, like the way you see it here with the lid partially open, and then the latch itself would just sit onto the ammo belt and it gives a little bit of tension and it also protects it from the elements in this type of area which is probably a real vulnerable spot on an ammo belt itself it could snag and you know things can happen at that point but with the way the cans are designed that little strap or the uh, latch over there protects it from that sadly that detailing is missing here on the dragon example or the ZY toys in this case example but regardless it still makes for a very nice presentation piece regardless. One other thing that I just remembered about the can is that during the build the plastic pin fell out so a new pin was fabricated in place. The pin itself is made from well a steel sewing pin. It's the same size as the hinge work so I simply just slid it in place, snipped off the ends, buffed them down to deburr them, and I had a small super tiny precise drop of glue on either end to prevent the pin from walking loose as did on the original ZY Toys unit. This is something that could potentially happen to you if you have the ZY Toys piece, so that may be something to keep in mind. If you have one, perhaps you might want to add a little small, finite drop of glue on either side. Make sure it's not the runny stuff because if it goes into the hinge, obviously it's going to cause some problems. Other things on the MG that I do want to mention is the bottom handguard over here was just falling off without any sort of provocation. So in order to save the owner of this unit some headaches, I went ahead and just super glued it in place. Once the, the piece is 
secured permanently, that problem is no longer going to be something that arises. One other thing that I do want to mention involves the muzzle brake. You see, or I should say in this case, the flash hider. The unit does have one. However, during the course of assembly, probably when I was drilling out the holes, the piece just fell off and probably went somewhere and lost party in my shop. So this is something to watch out for. If you have the ZY Toys unit or the Dragon unit, glue the flash hider in place unless you want to switch it out for another style one. But if you're not, glue it in place. And even if you do switch it out with another style one, glue that one in place as well because these things just want to fall off without any sort of, again, with as, with as much ease as possible. And which can also be seen, by the way, in the review video of this. So because the original one was lost, I went ahead and made a new one. And the one you see here is all hand machined on my lathe. I took a piece of resin stock. I turned it down. I had a good reference of the real FN stock M240 muzzle brake. So I went ahead and cut it to shape. I even added the wrench slits in it, which I think may or may not have been missing from the original unit. And also, I went ahead and added the cone inside portion of the hider. If anyone has seen the inside of a flash hider or an M240, it basically looks like the birdcage on an M16 or an M16A2, where it's conical in shape. It's not a cylinder. So this shape here was added to the unit, again, via the lathe. So this is all handmade. And uh, yeah, I even had to carve all of the little slits here for the birdcage. It's a full birdcage, like an M16A1. And uh, yeah, hopefully the, uh, the customer really appreciates that. Uh, it still fits, by the way, the stock ZY Toys suppressor in case the individual wants to model it in that format. But with or without, you can see how the unit looks like with a new custom flash hider. Oh, and of course this unit is perfectly glued in place. So the risk of that thing falling off is now next to nothing. One other thing I want to mention is that this is not the only M240 mount that I went ahead and designed in 1.6 scale. In addition to this mount, or I should say it's prior to designing this mount, I went ahead and designed a simpler version of the M240 mount. And that unit, or I should say the renderings, are going to be popping up on this side here of the screen. This unit is much simpler compared to this pivot mount, and you'll notice that the way the M240 secures to it is with a single point of contact right here in the front trunnion. The unit can still transverse as well as elevate, however, the range of motion is obviously much limited compared to this example here. And that's all there is to it, really. Like I stated before, this mount was not something that I planned out and was basically an impromptu project that just fell in my lap. The likelihood that I would have produced not just this M240 mount, but the other one that I showed before would have been basically slim to none. So it goes to show you, if you're on the ECA catalog and you have something that you need a mount for and it's not listed, well, go ahead and drop me a line because, as you can see, I'm open to ideas. And after developing this piece here, it's not something I regret because this was a very interesting project to work on and having the finished model in my hands here, it's one that's also very, very satisfying because of just how cool and interesting it is. And with that, that wraps up this new product announcement video for the East Coast Armory 1.6 scale 3D printed M240 swivel mount. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posts of content being one six scale new product announcement videos like this one over here, or the other one six scale and smaller scale model showcase videos and project update videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop a new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on this channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more one six and one sixteen scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you all again on the next one. Till then.